All right, well, welcome back to the show. This is James Black, your host, and I'm with Elan Sobel, CEO of BioHarvest Sciences, all the way from Israel. Uh, now, Alenza is a repeat guest. Uh, he was with us a year ago on the show to talk about BioHarvest and what they were working on. But a year ago feels like 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> maybe just describe me because we were in the midst of Delta. I mean, uh, the variant that was running its course. And you know, I can imagine last year, just based on your press releases and your updates, a lot's happened. So maybe just try to paint a picture for our, our viewers who maybe were there for us with us a year ago. What's happened in the last year? Just some broad strokes. And we'll, we'll go a bit deeper from there afterward. Well, look, you know, BioHarvest uh, had an absolute cracker of a year in uh, 2022. Uh, and that's just because we're super focused on uh, executing our strategy and um, over delivering on the guidance that we're giving our shareholder partners. Um, in, in 2022, um, the, big, the big wins uh, for the business really were – on our polyphenol antioxidant vertical. And as everybody knows, uh, BioHarvest is a biotech company with the global leaders in plant cell biology. Um, we, are, um, <clears throat> we are a company that has platform technology um, and the platform technology today, we operate in two verticals, polyphenol antioxidant vertical and soon to be, James, cannabis vertical. Um, so in each of these critical areas, we, we really uh, had some significant achievements. In our polyphenol antioxidants vertical, where we delivered uh, north of $5.6 million of revenue worth literally one SKU, which is our vinea, unique vinea uh, polyphenol antioxidant uh, red grape cell proposition, our biggest achievement really was around scaling the business in North America. Uh, massive scaling that we started um, the third week of August, starting with TV advertising, supported by social media, and literally recruited north of 21,000 new customers um, on Vinia in that short period of time. And that was supported by the scaling efforts of our manufacturing organization. As you know, um, we have recently opened our new 25-plus uh, ton facility uh, for $4.5 million dollars. We produced a facility that um, a one-time investment, I should say, of roughly four to four and a half million dollars. We um, have opened a facility that can produce roughly twenty-five tons of uh, vinia every single year, wow. and that facility was up and running. And and really, James, it's just been hand to mouth <laughs> the entire period to deal with the the. You know, overwhelming demand that we've received from U.S. and Canadian customers um, and, and since we started to scale the marketing efforts of the business. And, and really, I, I guess we're not surprised just given, you know, the demand. Um, but, uh, you know, as a result of just the feedback we're getting around the overall efficacy and the impact of Vinia, which is backed by clinical trials, all double-blind placebo. And, and that's why we have a rating of 4.8 out of 5, a verified rating of 4.8 out of 5. And, and I, I really um, I suggest to all your listeners to go to our website, go to vinia.com, have a look at our website, have a look at the reviews, read the reviews, and you'll see the you know significant positive impact that we're having on people's uh, overall health and wellness. So it was right. a big year for Vinia. It was a big year for the scale-up. And 2023 is just three xing it again. You know that's all we do here. We've three x. You know, in 2022 we three x 2021. In 2023, the plan is to once again on Vinia to three x, and then in addition, we will be bringing to the North American market a grade of cannabis that the market has never seen before, with a unique blend of cannabinoids that we're bringing to the market, which we shared to our investor partners about uh, two, three months ago. Um, and that's a big focus for us in the second half of the year to start to execute and operationalize our three-prong cannabis strategy. But 2022 was a huge year for us from a cannabis commercialization perspective, where we started off by demonstrating to the world um, how we broke biological barriers, how we made biological history 
by being the only company in the world that can grow trichomes in liquid media. And in fact, James, we grow 93% trichomes. These are our dry trichomes here. Elaine, what's a trichome? What's a trichome? Great question. <laughs> a trichome is a mini factory in the cannabis plant that actually sits on the outside of the plant. And it's the mini factory that produces the cannabinoids, the terpenes, and the flavonoids. And with our technology, we figured out how to literally, in massive bioreactors, how to grow cells of the cannabis plant and then to get these cells to grow trichomes, these mini factories. And over uh, literally a three-week period where we're in continuous flowering, which in a normal, traditional, indoor agricultural cycle will take anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks. We do it in three weeks. And each one of our bioreactors, which is, you know, I'm... I'm yeah, explain that to me. What's a bioreactor as well? That was one of my prep questions. Right, what's, okay. Well, <laughs> what is a bioreactor? Is it a Petri bio dish or is it something else? Okay. <laughs> so it, all, it, it, it all starts in a Petri dish. Okay. Yeah. That's our process. And we have this unique capability to get out of the Petri dish and to just do massive scaling into large scale bioreactors where the cells are suspended in liquid media. And we're controlling all the critical variables that are so important for the overall growth and development of the cell and the elicitation of the cell, in the case of cannabis, to produce trichomes and then for the trichomes to produce the different cannabinoids. So right. we're controlling all these critical variables so that after three weeks, we have 93% trichomes material, 93% trichome material that's then dried, all right? and ready to go to market, whether it's to be smoked, vaped, just consumed in a capsule. There's, you know, multiple different, you know, uh, consum consumption routes that our material is, is able to perform. So it was a monumental year for us because we were able to be the first company in the world to be able to grow trichomes in liquid media. And then we were able to demonstrate as well in 2022 the unique composition of our trichomes getting to 36% cannabinoids. We took a hemp plant with 3% cannabinoids and we moved it up to 36% with very significant levels of CBD, THC, and the Verins, like CBDV, THCV, which you know, you know today sell for $30,000, $40,000 a kilo. We have high levels of that in our composition. So you know, it was major, a major year for us from a manufacturing scale. A major year for us as far as building the commercial machine to be able to sell vineyard direct to consumer and direct to doctor, which are our two critical channels, and a major year for us in cannabis commercialization, um, which right now we're, we're busy double downing on to bring our cannabis portfolio of products to market in the second half of 2023. Okay, that, that that raises a question for me then. So, did you guys learn something through the commercialization process of Vinia that you're now going to apply to your cannabis uh, execution strategy for commercialization? Is there something you can you can import no, from that no. to this? That's a great question, and you know we pride ourselves on being a learning organization. Um, and so, where there are learnings, we need to make sure we're stepping back and looking at those learnings. I think you know. Um, there are a number of synergies um, between our, call it our cannabis, our cannabis scale-up and our vineyard scale-up. Those synergies exist really in, in two major areas. Firstly, manufacturing, okay? Whatever improvements we do in driving um, scalability, in driving um, overall um, cost improvements on our, uh, on our technology, because it's a platform technology, Cost savings that I drive on Vinia, and we re really focus on doing that. They literally go straight across into cost savings on cannabis, which which is why we can produce cannabis today. We believe at uh, at by far the 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 best cost per kilo at scale versus all other players in the North American market. Um, so manufacturing, there's a lot of learnings. The other area where there are learnings from a I would call a consumer and a route to market perspective is on the e-commerce side. Mm. You know, in the last 18 months, we have an amazing team 
of uh, marketing team and commercial and e-commerce team. We built an e-commerce machine, e-commerce um, demand and selling uh, machine, demand creation and selling machine, um, which has just done an amazing job bringing people at the top of the funnel and moving them very quickly down into a conversion with conversion rates that are best in the industry, whether it's Amazon or whether it's our own um, vinia.com site. <laughs> so so with those with those learnings, what it means now is with you know a customer base of north of twenty five thousand customers, I had with and, and growing by thousands every single month. We're laying the pipes into the North American market for us to layer on other products. So one of our core strategies in the broader cannabis strategy is entering into the market with unique hemp plus premium products with unique hemp based cannabinoidal blends that the market has not seen before that obviously in the in the US market it's federally legal um, CBD plus and therefore we can push it through the same e-commerce machine and start to really leverage those learnings similarly we, we're also developing products which bring the power of our cannabis proposition together with the power of our polyphenol antioxidant world uh, because they go so well together in addressing a number of critical health and wellness uh, indications. So where there's synergy and learnings, we maximize. In other areas where there are not, you know, obviously we, we, we have to you know, go through the learning curves. Right. So why, why do you guys want to be in the CPG side of things and integrate that far down the chain? Is it I mean, I'll let you answer it, but uh, to me, I mean, it seems like you could have just licensed out the technology or wholesale sold it, um, but you've decided to go direct to customer. What what motivated you to do that, knowing full well your experience in a past life at Coca Cola? It's it's a, actually a great question. So the choice, you know, in 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 routes to market, you have many different models. Mm -hmm. You know, you have classic B two B models, right? Uh, being more of an industrial product, an ingredient. You have direct to consumer, um, and you know we had to make some choices. Now we've decided to basically go in the case of Vinia to go with a strategy which is direct to consumer oriented, and I think that was the best decision that we made back nearly three years ago in Israel when we mm. first launched Vinia. And in our first month in Israel, our first four months in Israel, we did roughly a hundred thousand US dollars in little Israel. Of, uh, of sales orders. Um, and um, I really realized the power of going direct because you're able to control the entire consumer experience. You're building brands. You're maximizing margins. Remember, we're in business to change people's lives, but ultimately we've got to earn a good return for our shareholder partners. So your margin uh, optimization is there when you go direct to consumer and you can do that efficiently. And then there's the gift factor. And so, James, what I mean by the gift factor? The gift factor is really around direct-to-consumer. You get direct opportunity to get feedback from your consumers, mm, yep. right? Whether it's emails to you, whether it's um, actual verified customer reviews, whether it's on the phone through your customer call center. And, and that's really why today from feedback – you know, and understanding our customer base exceptionally well, we realized after being in, in this business for two years that Vinia as a product was delivering significant benefits outside of our core cardiovascular claim areas, which are driven off the clinical trials that we've done in the cardiovascular space. And uh -huh. what we realized was the blood flow opportunity was so much greater given consumer needs around addressing major health and wellness challenges all related to blood flow. For example, we learned that there are many of our customers that are utilizing Vinia for health and wellness conditions linked to, linked to, um, linked to blood flow that we don't talk about because our clinical trials are not in that area. I'll give you an example, erectile dysfunction. We understand today, and you can see it on Facebook, many people call us the purple pill. Because yeah. at the end of the day, our clinical trials demonstrated that after taking one capsule of Vinia, and in one capsule we have the same, all the benefits 
of one bottle of red wine, no sugar, no calories, no alcohol, and the key benefits are derived by the pus from the pus seed resveratrol. And in one capsule, you have the same amount of pus seed resveratrol as one bottle of red wine, no sugar, no calories, no alcohol, plus a matrix of other polyphenols, including catechin, coercetin, anthocyanins, and tannins, with amazing solubility and bioavailability. And what we realized is that um, as a result of our clinical trials, which showed our ability to increase the dilation of one's arteries by 70% versus baseline after taking one capsule every day for 90 days. And with that increase in dilation of your arteries, you have way more blood flow in your body. And the more blood flow, the more oxygen and more nutrients go into the body's tissues and organs. So we started to get feedback that, wow, this product is amazing to address call it sexual performance or erectile dysfunction, depending if you're coming in from a dietary supplement side right. or a, you know, a disease side. Um, and we started to understand that consumers were using it for that benefit. We started to realize consumers were using it for gingivitis. Gingivitis is a lack of blood flow to the tissue around your teeth. We started to realize that consumers were, were getting amazing benefits from Vinia as a result of uh, Raynaud's, Raynaud's syndrome. Raynaud's right. syndrome is a lack of blood flow to your fingertips and to your toes. So we started to realize, wow, the size of the prize and the opportunity isn't just around cardiovascular health and energy where we focused. Um, and, and if you go to our website today, that's all we talk about, right? And now it's a huge space. In the U.S., that's you know, roughly a $10 billion opportunity. Um, but that opportunity could be extended with more clinical trials based on the amazing feedback, this gift, going back to the gift of feedback from consumers where we were realizing that our product was working in so many different areas that you know we hadn't really considered before. So as we move forward in 2023, we're now going to do the required clinical studies to be able to demonstrate with empirical evidence the benefit of our product in these areas. And then based on this, we will decide whether we um, how we leverage these learnings into either new products or um, – additional claims we start to make on Vinia, or even potentially to move up to look at the botanical drug route. Um, you know, if we see that the, the studies are really able to deliver transformational results across the different indications that we're going to be going to be looking at. So it's super exciting. So see, you can see we're operating as a supplement. We can move up as well into the botanical drug area. Again, an area we're starting to really understand and, and spend a lot more time but the good news is the hardcore revenue comes from the dietary supplement because that's revenue today and tomorrow. Obviously, on the botanical drug side, it's a longer period of time and it's a longer bet. So in our financials and our projections, we don't even look at that. That's like cream on, you know, icing, icing on the cake. Also, our B2B business, we do have a very strategic B2B business with our partner, Batori Foods, who is the largest food ingredients distributor in North America an amazing company, and we've developed a very clear strategic architecture of specific categories and customers we're willing to actually partner with from a long-term perspective. Because obviously we want to partner as an Intel inside in certain areas which are complementary to our dietary supplement business. We don't want to do anything that's going to be cannibalistic to our existing supplement business. Yeah, beautiful stuff. And and obviously, uh, just a little lesson at the beginning of that about, you know, parsing through data and uh, avoiding confirmation bias. So you actually can find new sales opportunities if you take a wider look at what it is your product is uh, doing for customers. I think that's really important. The unintended consequences um, of what that product could be doing for your business is uh, you got to have your blinders open. You can't have your mind closed to that. And that's about being willing to hear the feedback. I'm sure some of the feedback you got over the, over the time wasn't all positive. Um, and you know, you have to be okay with that oh, as well. well right. One of, one of the, one of the deep beliefs I have, and just kind of, I guess, a learning, yeah. a learning. And some people think I'm crazy about this, but that's fine. <laughs> I'm happy for them to call me crazy. Is that, you know, when yeah, you're building enough. a business that's so transformational with the technology that we have, you cannot outsource your customer success side of the business. Because you have to be at the cold face at that moment of truth with the end consumer or the end customer. You have so many of these companies out there that, you know, basically, you know, they produce and they outsource and they land up outsourcing so many of these functions. 
you know, we, we have an amazing customer success team uh, led by, by Jackie. Um, and, and this team, and she really now has, a, you know, we have a large customer base, so we have a significant, a significant team. They're at the coalface of the business, and the feedback that we get is tremendous as it relates to our U.S. business. In Israel here, we have uh, an amazing team led by Michael and Itai, and with, with, with the ability, in the, in the case of Israel, we actually also sell a lot over the phone. The Israeli market is a little bit different. We do about 60% of our sales over the phone, so we're talking directly with customers. And we know for every single customer that's logged into our systems exactly why they're utilizing the product, how they use the product. And again, it's this feedback, it's this triangulation of data that really helps you understand the opportunities and to be able to really scale your product by making sure that one product is delivering on multiple different benefits of the consumer. And yeah. having that interaction, so if, if there is ever a need to engage, you have that direct ability all the time. Yeah, I want to ask you about Israel. So from the cannabis perspective and its role globally, is, is Israel a place where great technologies are developed and then it's used as a proving ground? Or do you see it playing a different or bigger role in the cannabis space globally? So, you know, um, Israel, I guess, in the case of cannabis, is a little bit different to other industries. I, you right. know, in a previous life, I was high tech. So literally from a high tech perspective, everything, you know, in all the areas that Israel is really strong in high tech, <clears throat> basically the R&D is all done here. And then, you know, given the size of the market, literally, you know, all the pilot studies and the scaling happens outside of Israel, right? And in fact, there are many Israeli companies that literally do massive exits and they haven't sold one shekel inside Israel, right? <laughs> yep. um, cannabis is a little bit different because uh, a couple of things. Firstly, you know, cannabis has an enormously rich heritage here in Israel. In Israel. Professor Rafi Mosholam, um, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, discovered the endocannabinoidal system. And as a result, there, there's really, a, I guess, a, a, a real pioneering spirit um, in, the, in the medicinal cannabis a space here in Israel, um, and, and to be able to really push push boundaries, whether it's you know in the area where we are, which is you know basically uh, the botanical space, or in you know synthetic, or you know um, or a, you know biosynthesis, you have you have the whole mm -hmm. spectrum here in Israel, um, and and um, you know just given the rich history you have and the infrastructure you have, that you have a lot of breakthrough. Uh, breakthrough technologies coming out of Israel. At the same time, the Israeli market is a decent-sized market. You have 120,000 medicinal cannabis users here. Yeah. Um, the, the Israeli mi mindset is, 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 I guess, more open-minded from an integrative medicine perspective um, than uh, the more traditional markets. So you, you do have the opportunity in Israel to very much uh, test and learn and then scale. And it's a great laboratory, a testing and learning laboratory with a significant market to have scale and then to just, you know, get success and massively scale uh, outside of Israel. Yeah, that's a great insight. And having done business there, I, I can, uh, I've seen it firsthand. In fact, I will be visiting you very soon, uh, hopefully March <laughs> to see firsthand. Oh, we, we look uh, <laughs> forward to hosting you at our, at our state-of-the-art uh, GMP uh, facility. Uh, obviously, no cameras. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to search you, you know, Israeli style, just to make sure that you're not uh, not my first time uh, you know, <laughs> cringing on our IP or anything like that. Uh, but we look forward to having the opportunity to host you. Okay, well that's that's great. You know what, Elaine? I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think there's going to be more interviews. This is there's a lot to bite off with your company, Bioharvest uh, Sciences, uh, BHSC on the CSE. And uh, obviously a lot more to come in the coming year. Uh, hopefully there's not so many deviations in the global market as far as uh, conflict and disease. We can just get down to business and get things done. So uh, once again, thanks for joining us on the CSE's uh, Exchange for Entrepreneurs podcast. And once again, this is James Black, your host. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>